Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Glory be to your name this morning, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Magnify you this morning, God. I magnify you this morning, Jesus. I magnify you this morning, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lawrence, cut it up about the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Be shot with the preparation of peace. Shield of faith. Hammer of salvation. Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. God, we put on the whole armor of God that we'll be able to withstand against the wiles of the enemy. Father, we just thank you this morning. For no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper in every tongue that rises up against us. And judgment shall be condemned, O oh God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah for creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just give you glory. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. God bless you, Crystal. God bless you. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing, everything that you're going to do. Father, the things that we know of and the things that we do know of. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. Help us to believe you. Father God, help us to really believe you, God. Help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in you like never before, oh God. Help us to know you for who you really are, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning. We magnify you. We give you glory. We give you honor and glory this morning. We give you honor and glory this morning, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel all assignments of the enemy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, grand arising. That's right. I know I keep saying that. Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I have to get used to it. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We give you glory this morning. Father God, I thank you. Shut the devil's mouth. Shut the gangsayer's mouth in the name of Jesus. Shut their mouth, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, shut their mouth because every word they're speaking out of their mouth, Father God, in the name of Jesus, no weapon, no weapon. Let it return to the sender with total devastation and destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you save them, Father. Save them, Father God. I mean, really save them, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Not this this, this washed up stuff that, 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 that you know, they, they saved today, but they back working for the devil tomorrow. Save them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give them a mind to serve you, God. Give them a mind to serve you. I come against the spirit of bow in the name of Jesus, that Jezebel spirit in the name of Jesus, that spirit of control, that spirit of manipulation. God bless you, Sherry. God bless you, Sherry. That spirit of manipulation. Hallelujah. I come against it in Jesus' name. I come against every jealous spirit in Jesus' name. I come against every witchcraft spirit in the name of Jesus right now, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you this morning. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just come into this virtual room, God, that your anointing would just take over, Father, that you would just move by your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let be none of me and all of you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for all that you're doing and all that you have done in our lives, oh God. Thank you for clearing up, Father God, everything, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we don't even understand. Help us, Father God, to understand you better in the name of Jesus, to know you better in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We give you glory this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory this morning. We glorify you, God. We glorify you this morning. We glorify you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Hi, Jazzy. We glorify you this morning. We give you honor and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for all that you're doing. God bless you, Brittany, and all that you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, I thank you right now. Father, and I come against, Father God, limitations 337 and numbers 23 and 8. Blood of Jesus Christ, wash us and make us whole. Maker and our Father, have mercy on us and deliver us from every satanic pronouncement, every pronouncement in the name of Jesus that's been made against us that's not of you, God. We curse it today in the name of Jesus. Our God and our Father, arrest and paralyze every Evil tongue raised against us. Holy Ghost fire locate and paralyze every tongue pulling us down in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every evil word program into the sun, the moon, the stars, and to limit our destiny. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every witchcraft word issued to reduce our life. Every word, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that has our name attached to it in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We ask you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus that it'll be notified. Father God, it will it, every witchcraft word used 
choose to reduce our lives will not come to pass. It will not come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every word, every word that's been spoken over us will never make, make light. Receive fire and be canceled in Jesus' name. Every word spoken by any man or woman, Father God, that's speaking our names on their mouth, Father, will never make good life. Receive fire and be canceled in the name of Jesus. Every spoken word by any of our relatives to keep us in the place, receive fire and break in Jesus' name and be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil issue against us in the night to limit our life, receive fire and be canceled today. Every word issue in the day to limit and us receive and by fire and break in Jesus' name. Be canceled, notified in Jesus' name. Every curse issued against us by our mother or father, receive fire, break in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire, break and scatter every word, limiting us from the place of birth. From the time we were born, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we cut, we curse every covenant that's been made against us in Jesus' name. God bless you, Steve Palmer. Anything, every covenant that's been made against us, we curse it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Whosoever is renewing evil words against us day and night, receive stones of fire, be exposed, and be wiped away in Jesus' name. We release ourselves from every evil word issued against us in the mighty name of Jesus, from our mother's house and our father's house. Every witchcraft pronouncement made against our destiny, receive fire scattered to pieces. Every every occult degree raised to pull us down, scattered by fire and be canceled in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, our Father, arise and let your plan and your word stand in our life. Every word spoken by any strong man of our Father's house against our life, be canceled today. Every evil word that is limiting us, your time is over. Receive the fire of God this morning. Receive the fire of God this morning. Be canceled that the wage, they that wage war against our greatness, against our anointing, against the, against the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus, pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, paralyze every word spoken against us by the water spirits. God bless you, um, Dominique. God bless you, Sandra. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every water spirit, in the name of Jesus, burn by fire. Every altar that's been built against us, Father God. Every altar and in, 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 uh, all around the country. Father, every altar, every altar in Africa, every altar in England, every altar in London, every altar, God, in the name of Jesus in Japan, China, in the name of Jesus. Huh? And God, I ask you right now that you will burn it down. Burn it down in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Every altar that's been built in the South America against us, burn and die today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every altar in Mexico that was built against us, burn and die today. In the name of Jesus, burn by fire, burn by fire, burn by fire. Every secret word embargo tying us down, break and scatter to pieces. Holy Ghost fire locate and wipe away any personality curses, cursing us day and night. I fire back to senders every evil word decision raised up against any of us today. We fire it back to the sender. The Bible says, suffer a witch not to live. Suffer a witch not to live. Oh Lord, our Father, open our great doors and restore to us our glory. Restore our glory to us today. By your power, oh Lord, we reposition ourselves for excellence. Cause us to be excellent in everything we do. Cause us to be excellent in everything we do, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause us to be excellent, excellent. Power of God, destroy every foundation of familiar spirits in our family, in our homes, in the name of Jesus. The foundation of familiar spirits in our father's house, mother's house, die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every soul tied with familiar spirits, break to pieces in Jesus' name. Every seed of familiar spirits receiving the thunder of fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let the habitation of familiar spirits become desolate this morning. Let it become desolate this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I do nothing without the leading of God. If God is leading me to pray, trust me, there's something going on in the, in the spirit. It's something going on in the spirit. Every throne of familiar spirit be dismantled by fire in Jesus' name. 
Every stronghold of familiar spirit be pulled down by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every stronghold of familiar spirit in the name of Jesus. Every diver of familiar spirit be rendered potent in the mighty name of Jesus. And potent. Every network of familiar spirits be dismantled in Jesus' name. Every communication system of familiar spirits be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every transportation system of familiar spirits be disrupted in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, let the weapons, let the weapons of our familiar spirits turn against them. Let it turn against them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We withdraw our blessings from every bank a strong, a strong room of familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. Oh, altar of familiar spirits, break by fire today. Break by fire in the name of Jesus. Break by fire in the name of Jesus. Every trap of familiar spirits roast by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Every, uh, every familiar spirit's utterance is a projection made against us be overthrown in Jesus' name. We reverse every familiar spirit barrier fashion against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver our soul from every bewitchment of familiar spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. I reverse the effect of every summon to my spirit, your spirit, by familiar spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Every familiar spirit's identification mark be wiped away today against you in Jesus' name. God bless you, uh, Pastor uh, Ebony. We frustrate familiar spirits exchange of our virtues in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus destroyed familiar spirit manipulation. Fashion against us in Jesus' name. Intimidation. Every spell and enchantment programmed against us, against us by familiar spirits be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every covenant with familiar spirits melt by the blood of Jesus. We withdraw every organ of our body from any altar of familiar spirits in Jesus' name. Anything planted in our life. By familiar spirits, come out now in Jesus' name. Anything that you have eaten that is not of God, is of the devil. I command it to be destroyed today. Vomit it out. Oh, Jesus, I feel you. Vomit it out. Because we go and eat everywhere and we don't even seek the Lord on the things that we eat. We don't even seek the Lord for the restaurants we go to. You don't even know if they're praying against your food. The Bible says you're going to eat. Nothing's going to kill you. But you don't know. There's lots of stuff going on in this world that we don't even tap into yet. Every spiritual marriage with familiar spirits be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I reverse every pattern, evil pattern of familiar spirit for my, for my destiny in the name of Jesus. And every cage of familiar spirit, cage in our life be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be destroyed today in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I thank you this morning. I magnify you this morning. I magnify you this morning, God. I magnify you this morning. I give you glory this morning. I give you honor this morning. Hallelujah. No weapon that is formed against any of us is going to prosper this morning. It's not going to prosper. It's not going to prosper. Hallelujah. This morning, I didn't know what I was going to be talking about. And I know darts be being thrown at me. Because the Holy Spirit speaks and then people get offended and get mad. But I'm going to address this because you put it out there in, in the forefront. So now I got to address it out in the forefront, just like you did. If the Holy Spirit gave me a word, I don't know who he's talking to. Okay? First of all, I don't know nobody's business. Some things I know and I don't even say nothing about. So if anybody comes say something to me about something, most of the time I already know. I just don't say nothing because God didn't tell me to say nothing. But I'm going to say this. Don't come on my platform. I'm going to say it and, I, and they don't have to like it and they don't have to come back. Don't come on my platform with no negativity at all. If you have a problem with something that you think was said that was not from God, then you know how to call me. Do not go on my platform and put no negative messages on there because you just basically told on yourself. If I spoke something, nobody knew who it was, including me, but you basically let everybody know it was you. Okay? Don't do that because that's showing the maturity. The, the, the maturity. That's showing no maturity about yourself. That's showing everything about you. That needs to be fixed. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
And now y'all already know what, you know, I am dead to Christ, but do not come for me like that. Don't do that. Okay. Don't, 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 don't do that. That's not of God. And then you got people agreeing with it. So God let me know today that some of you don't know the difference between a demonic spirit and the spirit of God, because you agree with every single thing that people say, and you don't even ask God, is this you? Is this you, Lord? Am I hearing you? Because you agree with the enemy because you don't even know the voice of the enemy when they're talking. I knew immediately it was the devil. I said, Lord, and I don't even, I didn't really don't be on Facebook no more like that. But I said, mm, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And God told me not to change. He told me, basically, he spoke to me, told me not to change. He told me not to change. He told me to continue to do what I do on this platform and not to change anything. And you can speak. I don't, you know, people, all the first thing people want to say is well, do it out of love, a lot of love. You know what? What you're doing is covering up a whole bunch of mess. You're covering up a whole bunch of mess. And what you're doing is you don't want to confront the people because maybe you don't want them to leave. But I'm not here to gain no members. So I don't really care. The Lord cares. I don't know what's going on in your household. And personally, personally, I don't care, but Jesus does. So when I'm on this platform and he's using me and you don't like what's being said, you need to take it to him. Take it to him or get an understanding before you start raging and rampant on this page. And then some of you agreeing with it. And God says, no wisdom. Don't know when this guy speaking. Don't know if it's the devil speaking because it was totally demonic. Straight up. Straight up. I know what spirit you operating up under. I know what spirit you have not been delivered from. I know a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm not at liberty to say. I'm not judging you. I pray to God that he sets you free. But do not come on this platform and be doing that kind of stupid stuff. Don't do it. Okay? I, I'm, I have an album cut from a whole different, uh, 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 different cloth. Don't come on here with that. Don't. Because I'm very, I'm a loving, caring person. I, anybody can call me and talk to me. But when you start throwing darts on this page, we're going to have problems. Once, one, I'm going to take you to Jesus. Two, because I was really hot yesterday for a minute. I was, ooh, I was hot. But the Lord just was like, I just calmed down. And the Lord just showed me the level of maturity that's involved. One, and then deliverance needs to be to take place. Okay, delivering these days. Some of you, are, some people, um, God told me this morning, I did not ask to talk about this. He told me to talk about hypocrites. So I'm going to do what he told me to do. Y'all know I'm going to do what he told me to do. Hypocrites. Do we even know what a hypocrite is? We're going to find out today. I'm going to teach the word of God. You don't have to like me. You don't have to be my friend because Jesus is my best friend. I love him. And whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do. And I'm going to say this too. Keep your mouth off me. Okay? Stop running your mouth. Hoping I fail. I'm not going to fail. I'm not. God bless you, uh, Pastor uh, Sharon. I'm not going to fail. As much as you would like me to fail, it's not going to happen. The more you speak on me, the more God is getting ready to elevate me. Okay? I'm getting ready to go to another elevation. And God already told me that the more you speak on me, the more God's going to elevate me. And I am going to address this. I don't even know why you would even come on my page with that foolishness. You must really don't know. You must really don't know. Don't do that. Y'all need to stop, start praying and asking God, why, why do you agree with stuff that, 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 that don't make no sense? That's showing me that, you know, we're, we're so hyped. Oh, yes, I know Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then did somebody say something crazy and you turn around and agree with it? You're in agreement with the devil. Do you not understand that you're coming into an agreement with Satan? It is not the person because the person probably don't even know they're being used. But it's the spirit. Again, my number is 619-721-0241. If you have a problem with anything being said on this platform, you call me because I am just a vessel. I am just a messenger. You go to God with it. 
and let him confirm it. But don't come on this platform, put no, no, no crazy stuff on here. Don't. And I didn't remove it. I left it there because I want people to see the level of maturity that you operating up under. Yes. I, yes, I said it. I want God to, I want them to see the level of maturity that, that you deal that, that they're dealing with. Cause as many, as many times as people have said stuff about me and, and, and put me out there and, and, and I, I never said a mumbling word. I, my, I just said nothing. But when you come on the platform doing that and you want everybody to hear it, then I'm going to address that. Cause I'm not here to play games. I'm on here to help you get to the next level. If you want to go there, if you don't want to go there, then you just don't want to go there. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. But I don't know your business and don't care to know your business. And I didn't hear nothing about nothing. That came straight from God. You go to him with that foolishness. So let's find out what a hypocrite is. Because I'm going to get a little bit deeper than what I'm getting in right now. I'm going to get a little bit deeper. Because there's some stuff that needs to be addressed today. A 12-year-old boy was waiting for his first orthopedist appointment and was a bit nervous. Apparently, he wanted to impress the dentist. On the patient questionnaire and the space mark hobbies, he had written swimming and flossing. That's humorous example of how we're all prone to hypocrisy. But spiritual hypocrisy uh, is not uh, humorous. It is dangerous and deadly sin. The hypocrisy of professing Christians has served as an excuse for many to disregard the claims of Christ saying the church is full of hypocrites. The hypocrisy of Christian leaders has caused many believers to stumble while Jesus was tendering with many notorious sinners. He used uh, sketching language to denounce those guilty of religion Religious hypocrisy. The story of Ananias and Sapphira warns us of the danger of sin of hypocrisy. It was literally deadly for this couple. Someone has said that if God dealt with all hypocrites in the church as he dealt with this couple, our churches will become morgues. We are not, it says, we are not told whether or not Ananias or Sapphira were true believers in Jesus Christ. Some, are, some argue that they were, some that they were not. Perhaps we are not told because if we knew that they were not true Christians, we would shrunk their story off as not applying to us. If we knew that they were true Christians, we might say, thank God that this was just a one-time occurrence, but it's not. This is going on in the church. And if, if God told me to address it and talk about it, it's going on in the church. We will not, we will not pause and ask ourselves, is my faith Christ genuine? Do I need to deal with the sin of hypocrisy? We do know that Ananias and Sapphira were a part of the early church. Their story applies to us too. It applies to us today. Acts 4, we saw the enemy attacking the church from without, without. The Jewish leaders persecuted the apostles and threatened them with more severe measures if they continued to preach in the name of Jesus. But in spite of, or perhaps because of, their threats, the church continued to grow dramatically. There was a spirit of unity, love, and unusual generosity among the believers. 432 and 35. And the, in this context, we are given a positive example as a godly man, Joseph, better known as Bar, Bar, Barnabas. Uh, and this is Acts 4 and 36 and 37. Then we were given the example of the couple who put on the mask of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. I can't even say that word right. Hypocrisy. And were struck dead by God. 5, 1, and 11. 5, 1, and 11, X 5, 1, and 11, got struck and died. This threat of seduction from within is much more subtle and dangerous than opposition from without. 
It is especially dangerous when a church is experienced God's blessings and power. Because we are all prone to the deadly sin of a, a, a hypocrite, hypocrisy. We should identity pursue godly character. Godly character. It says every bad thing spoken against you, God, will release five blessings to you. Amen. It's just, you know, it just needs to stop. It just needs to stop. And then you got your clicks. And y'all sit on the phone and be running y'all little mouths. Oh, yeah. I'm, and, I, and I'm telling you now, I'm just going to say it. I know who's doing it all. God has already shown it to me like a plain movie. I know. But I'm going to say this. Don't come trying to be my friend and then turn around and be acting funny towards me later. Because what I've noticed of some people is when they get mad at a person, then they don't they haven't they don't they haven't been contacting me, but all of a sudden they get mad at the person, then you want to come call me. But then as soon as you and that person men together, then you stop calling me. Look here, hypocrite. I'm not don't play with me. Don't do it. Cause I'm not in, I'm not I'm I, I I am tired and I am not listen, I'm trying to reach God. I don't want to deal with none of this foolishness. And I get, I get, I get beat down for telling the truth. Oh yeah. The devil don't like it. People don't like it. And that's okay. You don't have to, if you're offended, it must be you. We need to clear on the exact nature of the sin of an Elias and Sapphire. Their sin was not that they had sold their property and had given only part to the church. In fact, Peter makes it plain on five and four. That it would not have been a sin for them to have sold their property and not given anything to the church. Their sin was that they conspired together to deceive the apostles and the church into thinking that they were given the entire amount. That's the same thing some of the people are doing. Conspiring against some of you and you don't even know, you can't even see it, you don't even recognize it. But you always claiming you hear God, you know God. But you don't even, can't even see what's going on. God did not gift in me or bless me with this anointing to deal with demons so I don't recognize them. Whether you are Christian or not. And it's sad because some Christians open themselves up to that. Some of them like it. Some of them don't want to change. Some of you still have husbands. A uh, uh, husband, uh, uh, well, why, uh, husband spirits on you. You still have it. You ain't even been delivered from it. And then you go and get into another relationship when you're still bound. You're not whole. Oh, I'm going to speak the truth today. <laughs> Excuse me. We have, we have ever done that. See, they don't want to come on here because it's too much hot. It's fire over here. It's truth over here. You want to go listen to a lie. You want to go listen to what's going to tickle you. You want to go listen to what your next blessing is going to be. I'm not here to tell you when your next blessing is going to be. I'm here to tell you if you don't get your soul right, you're going to end up in hell with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. In other words, they were trying to impress everyone with higher level of spirituality and commitment and that uh, than they really had. And there are people doing that. You want to you want to make you seem like you more than what you are. Well, I don't I, you know what? I, 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 I don't have that. My, my heart is pure. I, I'm like a child, to be honest with you. I'm like a child. When God blesses me, I act like a little kid. My heart is pure. I don't have nothing against anybody. But if I don't address it, they're going to think it's okay to do it again. It is not okay for you to do it again. And please don't. Because I don't want to start blocking people. I don't want to block you. But I definitely will. Because I'm not, I'm not dealing with that negativity. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm above that. I'm not. That's not cool. It's not. And I'm over it. And I'm above it. And, 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 and please don't. Because what it is, is a, is a demon wanting attention. 
One thing I'm learning about spirits, they like attention. God bless you, Bridget. They like attention. They, they, they want to be noticed. And you're angry and you're bitter and you need to be delivered. Please get delivered. Get delivered. I don't, nobody has to touch you. Really go before God and repent and get set free. It's not everybody that's wrong as you. And I'm going to say it again. I ain't heard nothing from nobody. That came straight from God. So you need to go back to him and talk to him. I'm just the messenger. That's it. I'm just the messenger. So sad. The church is in a mess, y'all. It's in a mess. And I'm telling you right now, the church is in a mess. They're in a mess. Not everybody, but it's a whole bunch of them that really need to take a good look in the mirror and ask God to clean them up. Because I ask God to clean me up every day. God, what's in me that needs to come out? Is there anything in me that needs to be uh, out? Please take it out. I ask God every day to examine me, clean me up. It says, have you ever done that? I hope you do not say no or we might need to have a sudden funeral this afternoon. People want to be more than what they are. You want to go buy a, you want to go buy an expensive house when you don't have the money for it. You want to go get the the best car on a lot and you know you can't afford it but you want to impress people. I had somebody say to me uh about 2 3 weeks ago um uh, they needed a car, and I was like, "What, well, you know?" And they was like, "No, I can't be seen in that." Oh, so you're still walking around here with pride? You're prideful, and you, 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 you still walking around here like you more than what you are. Because when God starts bringing you down, it's because He's trying to break you from some things. He brings you down, then He lifts you up. But obviously, it don't matter how low He brings you. Your spirit of pride doesn't want to leave, and pride is nothing but sin. Pride comes before a great fall. It says, we've all been guilty of trying to impress others with our commi uh, uh, commitment and devotion to Christ. Even though we know in our hearts that we are uh, exaggerating, a pastor had been pre preaching on the importance of daily Bible reading. He and his wife were invited over to, uh, per uh, it says, Parish pensioner's home for dinner. His wife saw a note on the kitchen calendar. It says, Lib uh, liberal communicators are shook at this sudden severe punishment. Anias, Anias, it says, Anias is not given a chance to repent. Even though his sin seems not all that serious, his wife is not even told of her husband's death and of what will happen to her if she lies. The instant that she agrees with her husband's lies, she is struck dead. In this age of tolerance, we might think that's a big deal. So how many people, this, I just said, I just the Holy Spirit just said that, you agreeing with stuff, you going here, people posting stuff, and you agreeing with it, you don't even ask God if it's him. Most of the time, they, the atmosphere can't hold what they mind want to believe yeah, well, they, you know, but but when people are saying things and you agree with it, you're just coming in agreement with them. You're coming in agreement with the enemy. That's what you're doing. But you say you know God and you hear God. If you heard God and you knew God, you wouldn't agree with it because it ain't even came from God. That was all flesh. It came straight from the flesh, from the soul. It didn't come from nothing but the flesh. But we need to view this sin from God's holy perspective, not from our words. Relative, well, real, God bless you, um, Pastor Bernice. Um, relatively stick view. Jesus always hit uh, hypocrisy hard. He hit it hard. In Matthew 23, he pronounced many woes on the scribes and Pharisees whom he repeatedly called hypocrites. He warned his disciples, beware of the leaving 
of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Luke 12 and 1. Like leaven, hypocrisy starts small and unnoticed. It doesn't seem to be a big deal, but if it is not quickly checked, it spreads, it deceives the person into thinking that things are right between him and God, when in reality, things are very wrong. The leaving a I'm sorry, hypocrisy can soon infect an entire church. The church at uh, Lysodonia thought that things were going well. They said, I'm rich and I have become wealthy and have need of nothing. But the Lord's perspective was, you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blinded and naked. Revelation 3 and 17. Some ask why God dealt with Ananias and Sapphira so severe when he does not do so with other hypocrites in the church. Probably, probably it was because the church was in its infancy and he needed to set before us a sober lesson of seriousness of this sin among God's people. Among God's people. He did the same thing with uh, Achan, Joshua 7, Leviticus 10, uh, 10, 1 and 3. 2 Samuel 6, 6 and 7. Write, them, write this down. I'll read it again slow. Read it. Go back and read it. Because I'm telling you, we walking around here doing some crazy. Don't, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. And, 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 I, and I tell y'all all the time, I don't know everything. I'm not better than you. I'm not better than you. But I know better not to go on somebody's page and, and say some nonsense. I know that. That don't take a genius. To figure that out. Sense with no uh, uh, sense with no sense. Sense with no sense. If it don't make sense, it just don't make sense. If you angry, don't come on my page. Don't. Because I'm not going to play that game. And you can run back and tell that. Because I don't care. I'm not going to allow you to do that. Not on this page. Go do it on somebody else's page that's going to allow you to do it and not going to say nothing about it. I'm not going to let you do that. Because this is not this is not the page for that. I'm here to teach and, and just give you what God gives me and that's it. That's it. If you don't agree with it, go to him. The word church first occurs in Acts 1, verse 11. Out of 16 times. 16 times. The word means an assembly or a congregation of people. Luke wants us to know that the church should live in the holy fear of God and especially should be on guard against this serious sin of hypocrisy, hypocrisy. This couple that fell into this sin were professing Christians, members of the church in Jerusalem. This means that we're all in danger of falling into this subtle sin. We don't want other Christians or those outside the church to think that we are we have problems. I don't know why. We all have problems. Ain't nobody perfect. No one. We all got issues. But when you don't acknowledge your issue, that that's a problem. When you're a liar and then you don't believe you're a liar, that's a problem. When you're walking around here with pride and you believe you don't have any pride, that's a problem. Because you need to acknowledge the problems that you're, you're dealing with. This is what happens to people when they don't get delivered and set free. God bless you, um, Pastor uh, Linda. When people don't get set free, they really don't get set free, 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 free. It's sad. Yeah, she's on right now. I'm telling you, I, I hear so much. I could hear stuff in the spirit. Yeah, she on now right now. Go see what she's talking about. Just childish. Grow up. Please grow up. Grow up one of these days, because I ain't worried about it, because I'm going to keep on doing what does say God on this page. I am. I am. And I do love God's people, because if I didn't love you, I wouldn't give you the word that he gave me for you. When God gives you a word, he's giving you a word because he wants you to do better. He's not giving you a word because he wants to hurt you. He's giving you a word because he wants to help you do better. Lord help us. 
that would be a good testimony with it. So we put on our spiritual mask. We were around others, even though we know and our family knows that we do not live as the as we profess to live. When a prominent Christian is shown to be a hypocrite, the world leaves a sight of relief thinking Christians are really no different than anyone else. Help us, God. <laughs> Help us. Help us all. Me too. I pray that I I pray that I never I see when I watch people, I watch, let me tell you something. All my life since I've been saved, I always get attacked by leaders. It's always leaders coming after me. I'm nobody. I'm sitting in the church in the back, just listening, praying. And just doing what God called me to do. But they just seem not to like me. They just come after me. It's always leaders coming after me. What is it about me that you can't just, you just, it just bothers you so that you constantly going to keep coming against me. I support you. I support you. You lying. You don't support me. God shows me stuff. You don't support me. You do not. You don't support me. You don't want to support me. Stop saying things that you're not being honest about. Please, because I, I know already. He's already showed it to me. Of course, you, oh, no, 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 yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to believe God before I believe any person. I'm going to believe him. Okay? It says, if I can't figure that one. I'm telling you, constantly, like, you anointed. You, you, you're doing great. Your church is full. And you just come, keep keep on attacking me, throwing rocks and hiding your hands. And I know it's happening. God showed me. I know. But God bless you. I love you. And may God bless you. I'm not, I'm not speaking to I'm just saying it's, it's no one specifically, but it's going on in the body. God bless. I bless you. I bless your life. And I bless everything you put your hands to because you know what? God's got that. God's got that. God's got that. He got that. Let me tell you something. When you be, when you a real prophet of God and you really giving God's word, the true word of God, you're going to be called all kinds of names. Witches, you ain't a prophet, you're false, you're this, you're that. They're going to do it. So if you're not ready to be done that way, then you're not ready for ministry because you're going to be called all kinds of names. You're going to be put, they're going to say you're a thief. They're going to say all kinds of stuff about you. The, the higher you go, the more they're going to talk about you. So if you're not ready for it, then you need to go sit down somewhere. I don't, I, but to me, you can say what you want to say. Cause I know where I know me. I know the God that I serve. I know me and I know where I'm going. Only thing I don't appreciate is if when somebody have a problem and they go on the platform with it. Just bring it to me. Because if you put it out on the platform, then I'm going to have to put it out too. You put it out there. So now I'm going to have to put it out there. I didn't bring the fight. You did. And when it comes to fighting a spirit, I'm not going to lose. I'm not losing any fight when it comes to demons. Not because of me, but because of the Holy Spirit in me. Sad. When a prominent Christian is shown to be a hypocrite, the world, we read that. It says, thinking Christians are really no different than anyone else. If they're phonies, then Christianity must not be true. It says, oh, it says, oh, and they're leaders in the church that are saying things against leaders on Facebook and we have to pray for them. Lord have mercy on them and they know not what they are doing. They know it says, it says, and they know not what they, or they know, they know what they're doing. 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 I, I personally, when you're going to tell me you don't know what you're doing and you feel with the Holy Spirit and you was out in the world doing everything that you could have done and you knew you were doing wrong, then you come to Christ and all of a sudden you got amnesia. You don't know when you're doing wrong. You don't know when you're backstabbing your sister and your brother. You don't know when you're lying on them. You don't know when you're hoping they fail and, and be destroyed. You do know. What's sad about it is is that you have the Holy Spirit and you're doing it. 
That's what's sad. It says we must pray for them and thank and thank God we have learned not to not to do what some of these women and men of God are saying and doing to those caught. Yes, absolutely. Because an anointing, um, doing the will of God and you who are strong must bear the infirmity of the weak. Yes. But some of these people, they've been doing this for a long time. We're going to keep praying for them because that's what we're supposed to do. But some of them just need to just stop it. Okay. When, when yesterday, God was talking about yesterday, the Lord said to talk about uh, what did he say we need to talk about yesterday? Oh, lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. Now, today he's talking about a hypocrite. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Whatever's going on, you know what's going on. Go to God and fix it. I don't got nothing to do with it. I'm just the messenger. I'm going to say it again. I'm just the messenger he sent to send the message. It says, notice also that this affect. Both men and women. Some sins may be more prevalent than men. No unity in the body. And this is why we, we this is why we don't see the, the, the move of God like 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 we supposed to. We don't see the move of God like we supposed to because of it. While other sins are more prevalent with women, but both sex sex are vulnerable to hypocrisy. Elias and Sophia had agreed together to this act of deception. Five uh, Acts 5 and 9, whether you are male or female, you need to guard yourself against hypocrisy. By the way, some argue that a wife should submit to her husband, even if he asks her to join him in doing wrong. This story shows the error of the view. If if the man is doing wrong, then no, you shouldn't agree with him. I, I wouldn't agree with my husband if he was doing wrong. But when Peter asked uh, uh, Sapphira whether they sold the land for the amount that her husband had claimed she should have obeyed God above her husband by telling the truth no 5 and 29 we must warn them of their wicked deeds and there is a need for real deliverance for the these people it, but you know what they, the problem is, is they they want deliverance, but they're not doing what it takes to get delivered. And some of them don't even know that they're housing spirits and them spirits are in them and they don't even know them spirits are in them. They don't. They're very comfortable. They became very comfortable in that body. The selfishness of a hypocrisy. Motive, motive is everything in this sin. If Elias and Sapphira had sold their land and had told the apostles we feel led to give half to the church, it would not have been a problem. Their sin was that the evil intent of their hearts to make others think that they were more spiritual than they really were. Why would we do that? Because I'm still learning. Still. Exactly. Exactly. Pastor Ebony Hypocrisy and lukewarmness causes non-believers to look at believers like, why would I want to be a part of the body of Christ? That is so true. Thank you for that uh, revelation that God just gave you because I, I know he told me to speak about lukewarmness and today he told me to speak about hypocrite, uh, uh, hypocrites. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. I know they ain't going to like this, but I'm just going to do what he told me to do. If it's you, repent. If it's not, then okay, it's not you. But if it's you, repent. I don't know. It's not my relationship. You got a personal relationship with God. I have my own. It says it would not have been a problem. Their sin was the evil intent of their hearts to make others think that they were more spiritual than they were. They really were. They were motivated by love of self, not by the love of God and others. God, who always knows the motives of our hearts, judged them on the spot. God knows the heart, so you can say whatever you want to say, but he knows you, and he knows your intent. Hypocrisy is always motivated by self-love. We want to impress others, to make them think that we are something that we know in our hearts we are not. Kids, by the way, have a built an antenna to detect hypocrisy uh, in their parents, for real. Nothing turns kids away from the faith as quickly as Hypocr hypocritical parents. 
If they hear you put on your spiritual voice around church people, but you verbally abuse them at home, they can see right through you. They will not be drawn to follow the God you possess to follow. Isn't that sad? That's why it's crucial for parents to acknowledge their wrongs and ask for forgiveness their children when they sin against them. I had to ask my kids for forgiveness because I was saved and I was out here running around going to the nightclubs and stuff and doing stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing. And then when God did clean me up and God did get me on the right track, I did have to go to my children and say, I'm sorry that I showed you something that I, that, that, that I presented myself in this way. And this is not the way. So you have to go to God and you have to ask to forgive. You got to ask your kids to forgive you. It says, yes, some will be destroyed by Satan if we do not stand in the gap for them. Some are going to be destroyed, period, because even if we stand in the gap, they don't want to do it. We got to realize that there are some people that are just not going to abide by the truth. They're not. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you pray for them. They're not. It says some, if there is no chance, they will be lost. Like Saul, who wanted to kill King David. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Some people, the spirit of the Lord already departed from them, but they think they, they, they still hearing God. It says, if you saying something that causes a feeling or get you in your emotions, don't check the messenger, check your heart. Thank you. Oh, I like that. That's good. That's good. Check your heart. Check your heart. It's something in your heart. Talking about, oh God, like I said, Whatever came from on the, from this platform didn't come from me hearing nothing. I don't know nothing about what's going on, okay? And if I did know, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not. It ain't my business. Unless God addresses me to say something, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing. That's your, be, that's your you, something you need to deal with. We got we got to stop acting like we, we're Jesus and we want to save everybody and everybody don't want to be saved. They just don't. Hypocrisy focuses on group uh, uh, dynamics, not on personal reality with God. It was an exciting thing to be in the Jerusalem church in those days. There were the large gatherings in Solomon's uh, uh, por por portico where thousands heard the apostle preach about Jesus 512. Uh, um, this is Acts. I'm writing them down because I'm going to go back to every scripture. 512. 2 and 47 and it says the church had an unusual sense of unity and caring 4 and 32 it says the apostles were performing extraordinary miracles to confirm the message of the gospel acts 4 33 acts 5 and 16 every day there were stories of more people gathering getting saved acts 5 and 14 Every, it says, even by those on the outside held the church in a high esteem. 5 and 13. It was easy to get caught up in the group of the uh, dynamic and to ride on the bandwagon of what was happening. But to lack personal reality with God, that's what happened to analyze and Sapphire. If people who it says people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then God would hear from them. And heal them. I'm just going to read a little bit more. And then we're going to stop here. Because it's got, I, there's also scriptures. That I'm, I want to read some scriptures on it. So people can understand. I mean I'm, I can come back to this tomorrow. And finish where I left off at. But we got to understand that. You know we're not perfect. And you know I'm not I'm not here to judge anybody. Because I'm I, I'm not perfect either. But we got to get it. We, we got to do better. If we say we walking with God and we know God and this and this and that and the other, we got to do better because people are watching you. They're watching you. They're watching. It's always exciting to be part of a movement of God's Holy Spirit. Some of us were a part of Jesus movement of the, um, the 1970s. The church grew up and it couldn't attract more than handful for a midweek service but i used to go out to calvary chapel in santa Ana, and thousands of young people 
would be there for midweek services. The singing was not the uh, traditional hymns sung half-heartedly to the accompaniment of the organ and piano. Everyone um, sang new praises, uh, choruses accompanied by long-haired musicians playing guitars and drums. It was great experience to join with that sort of gathering. And yet while many young people a truly got saved, there were always some that they were just riding on the group experience. It was always sad when they would later fall into some serious sin and abandon the faith. That's why you keep going to church because you want you want to feel the goose pimples. Go keep on feeling the goose pimples. It's not going to get you delivered. One of the main ways to avoid hypocrisy is to make sure that you are walking in reality with God every day. Have your personality trusted in Christ as your Savior and Lord. You do spend time in his word and in prayer on a regular basis. Do you deal with the sin in your life, especially on the heart level? When he, when his word confronts you with where you are wrong, if not, you have to start faking it when you are around other Christians to keep up the appearance that you're doing fine. That's the beginning of hypocrisy. It says Ray Stedman. It says describe message body life. Pentecostal Bible Church pointed out, it says 4 of 2670, pointed out that the moment we uh, we start pretending to be what we really are not, death enters in. Because we are cut off from the vital reality of common communion with Christ and his body, the, the church. We lose the reality of walking in the spirit to avoid hypocrisy, we must maintain daily reality with the Lord. And I'm going to stop right here. We better get together, okay? I, I don't know where, what God is doing, but God is trying to help the body get right. And some of us just don't want to get right. We just want to keep doing whatever it is we're doing. We don't want to get right. We want to just do what we're doing. We like it. And I don't think there's going to be any changes because we like it. And until you come to the end of yourself, then that's when it's going, it's going, things are going to change. When you come to the end of it, you're going to have to come to the end of yourself. That's when things are going to change. We got to be real with ourselves. It says, woman of God, you are bringing good word. The sad part about it is that some of our church leaders will be in the group as well. No, I said church leaders and not Christian leaders. Amen. Amen. One, a man of God. Um, it says just in the spirit of God had left Saul. The spirit of God has left some of the men and women who were called by God and have lost their way. Absolutely. And it's it apparently, and it's happening already in the church. And um, I, I teach on discerning prophetic witchcraft where we talked about that spirit, um, you know, the enemy does also perform miracle signs and wonders. And it's sad because the body don't recognize when it's the devil and when it's God. They, every, you know, they get excited when all these things are happening, but don't ask God what's behind that, what's behind that spirit. And then we walk around here thinking what we're, we're listening. It is God speaking to us all the time. And sometimes it's the spirit of divination speaking and we have no idea what's happening. No idea. Let me go back and read what he finished saying because it's important. I'm going to read it. Uh, let me see. He took the time to write it. We're going to take the time to read it. Okay. Let me go. Okay. Let me see. Oh. Let me see. Let me go and read that. Everything that you said because I, it's important. Every Anything you have to say is important. Okay. It says, Okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. It says, women of God, you are bringing God good word. The sad part of it is that some of our church's leaders will be in that group as well. No, I said church leaders and not Christian leaders. Just as the spirit of God had left Saul, the spirit of God had left Saul, uh, had left leaders. Just, it says, leaders, just as the spirit of God had left Saul, the spirit of God has left some of the men and women who were called by God and have lost their way. Yes, and it is imperative that we who are truly of God continue to reach out to those who are lost. Absolutely. We got to keep on loving them 
and keep on reaching out to them because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to forgive. I mean, forgive. I mean, I don't have nothing against anybody, but I did have to uh, correct that because you, you can't come on this page with that. That's just, that's foolishness. And, and, and I don't need that on here. It says, it says who are truly of God continue to reach out to those who are lost. Even the leadership who has lost God's word, Galatians six and one says, brothers, if someone is caught in a transgression, absolutely. It says you who are spiritually should restore him with a spirit of gentleness, but watch yourself or you also may be tempted. We are responsible for teaching one another and praying for one another. However, each person is responsible for the decision of their soul. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man of God, for that. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. They are responsible for their own stuff. Because we, we you know, we, we, we want to say, oh, no, 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 you know, I didn't know what I was doing. But I don't believe I don't go for that because a lot of times we knew what we were doing when we were in the world. And then we come to God and we act like we don't we, we act like we don't know what we're doing. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We do know. I know when I'm wrong. I know when I'm wrong and I repent. And I pray to God that uh, the woman of God don't be offended about anything I said. But just please don't do that on my page. I still love you. I'm praying for you. But don't do that. Don't do that. Because God loves you. And because God loves you, he corrects us when he loves us. He loves us, and that's why he corrects us. He does love us, and that's something. I'm telling you, imagine if he has given up on us. Would we be here today, some of us? I know I wouldn't. I faced death many times. I know I did. But God, but God, but God, but God. But God, he's a good God. I just want to pray a prayer over us before I start the book. Because this is important that we understand what's happening. Because God, if God send the word, then it's in the house. So I'm going to pray against the spirit of hypocr hypocr hypocritical and hypocrisy and hypocrite and said we worship you father because you are omniscient you know all things there is nothing hidden from you that will be exposed on the last day father in any way if we have fallen short of your glory and expectations by being hypocritically in our behavior please have mercy and forgive us in the name of jesus have mercy on us all of us oh god because all of us have come short of your glory at some point. Father, help us to reflect a life of righteousness, transparency, virtue, and good works, radiant your glory in the name of Jesus. Father, please remove from our lives every mark of appearing like the Pharisees and deliver us from all forms of self-deception in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let, your, let every hypocrite, pretender, and fake brother in your church be exposed in disgrace in the name of Jesus. Father, please purge our heart of deceit and hypocrisy and evil with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, please give us a pure and sincere heart like that of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Father, get, please give us a new heart that does no evil, that thinks no evil in the name of Jesus. Father, give us a conscience that is devoid of offenses towards God and men in Jesus' name. Father, whatever is in our life that will cause my peace or your peace, or I'm sorry, cause my place with you in heaven, please uproot it now in Jesus' name by your mercy. Anything that's keeping us from being close to God, we should be asking God to uproot it, period. I sure don't want to get it. Get it off of me, Lord. Whatever it is. I, you guys know I don't have a problem repenting. I come on here repenting always. No matter what's going on, if something goes on, I come here and repent. Just like the man of God said, you, 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 some of us ain't dead to Christ yet. Yeah. There's some of us ain't all the way dead. I'm, I'm sure I still have a little life in me, but I'm getting there. Father, I thank you for writing my name on your book of life. Please let 
my name be removed. Please don't let my name be removed from the book of life. Don't let my name be removed. Don't let your name be removed from the book of life. Father, we pray for every user of the open heavens devotion today. Grant all of us wisdom to sincere, pure, and holy lives. Avoid a pretense and hypocrisy in Jesus' name. I was trying to create a dissension among God's people, which is why I clarify the truth us as leaders because we all have fallen. Absolutely. We all have fallen. All of us have fallen short and he is God of restoration and redemption and um, anointment and appointment. So I apologize if I was not clear. No, you were fine. You were fine. No, you were fine. You were fine. You, you, you were fine. We, we all come short of the glory. We, we all need Jesus. Okay. No, it, it, we all need Jesus, but some behaviors need to not to be. And like I said, you can't tell me you don't know you're doing wrong. You, when you knew you were doing wrong when you were in the world. And now you have the spirit of the living God in you. And you're going to say you don't know. Come on. See, that's that's deception. That's when you're, deceive, you're deceiving yourself and trying to deceive others. But some of us got that third eye and we can see you. We can see. We got that discernment and we can see. We can see what's going on. It says, Father, please give us the wisdom of reconcileness, every plan, plot, treasury, and resistance from the pit of hell. Trying to make us religious and holier than others, basing our acceptance on activities with wrong motives. And please grant us the power to resist them as we count our blessings in Jesus' name. Why can't we just be who we are? Father told me. He said, I, you know, he said, you know what? I want you, I want you to come on here and be who I told you to be. Don't you pretend and act like nobody else just so you can, you know, no. He said, be exactly what I called you to be. Don't be honest, be with, have integrity and don't pretend. He told me, I said, God, okay. I mean, okay. Cause sometimes you, you see these famous people and you be like, man, I wish I could be like them. Let, let me try to preach. The God said, Oh no, 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 no. Each one of you are equipped. Each one of you are unique. Each one of you are beautiful in him. You, each one of you have your own gift and callings and he wants you to use it the way he wants you to use it. Not to go copycat in somebody else. No. Father, today I can make my boast in the Lord, the King of Kings. Through him, I have overcome defeat in every aspect of life. Sickness can't, sickness cannot have me or you. Poverty cannot come near me or you. Failure is far from us. Stagnation is not in our destiny. Barrenness is, is an alien to me, and I have no appointment with destruction. My selling point is that I have the joy of the Lord because I am a child of God in the name of Jesus. Today, in humility and total submission to the grace and the will of God for my life, I confess and degree and declare I am blessed beyond a curse. I am established beyond oppression. I am protected beyond terror. I am too blessed to be stressed. I will not be a victim of the present day false prophets, false teachers, and false doctrines. The covenant I have with God is a covenant of life. I will live. I will not die. I will not die prematurely or physically. I will not die spiritually. I will not die mentally. I will not die financially. I will I am blessed beyond measures. I am a channel of divine, of divine blessing. I am a fruitful tree. Money will meet. I says, I'm sorry. Money will meet money in my hand. The spiritual, the spirit of mammon is not a God in my life. Money will serve me. Oh God, I like that. I'm going to have to put that on the shirt today. Money, money. Oh my God. That's good. That's the money will serve Money will serve me. God never told us to be per, broke and poor. You know that, right? God never told you to be poor and broke. That, 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 no. 
You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're the head, not the tail. You're above, not beneath. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the few. But he did give you what to do to be blessed. He did tell you that you need to obey his commandments to be blessed. He did tell you that. He gave you a direction and how to get the blessing. I will fulfill my divine purpose and divine destiny. This will be my year of pleasant surprises. Another shirt. This will be your year of pleasant surprises. This will be your year. My God. Your year. I'm telling you, God is doing something in this. This is the month of blessing. I'm telling you, God is trying to do something and God and the people's life this month. He's trying to, but he can't do it if you ain't going to allow him to. He, he can't do it because he can do whatever he wants. You know that, right? He can do whatever he wants. Anything he want to do, he can do it. My year of restoration and new things. My year of favor and testimonies. I have started 2022 with rejoicing. We're going to rejoice because God is going to do what he said. I will end this year of 2022 with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Emmanuel, go with us with gratitude and praise and worship. We add our personal prayer requests and please, we pray for one another. We shall testify in the name of Jesus of the mercy and grace of God before this year's over. Emmanuel, God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means. God with us. God with us. That's what that means. God with us. You guys, every time I come on here, I learn. I learn just like you do. I do. I learn just like you do. I don't come in here knowing everything. I learn so much reading those books. Oh my God, I learn so much about so many different things. And I thank God. And I do love everybody. I do. I do love everybody, but I just don't want to deal with foolishness. I don't. I don't want to deal with nobody's foolishness because it's too late in the day for it. I read something about the third eye not being in the Bible. Well, it's not the third eye. I heard somebody say the third eye is basically discernment. It's, 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 it's a seer, the seer's eyes. I meant to say that. Forgive me. The seer's eyes. I just heard somebody say that and I just repeated it. So forgive me because the person that said that I shouldn't have repeated it because <laughs> they're a little bit uh, off to the left. So it's not the third eye. It is the seer's eye. The seer's eye. Your discernment begins to open up. It's like you start seeing things like the movie. So it is, it's, it's, it's the, it's the seer's eye. Amen. So forgive me for saying that. Thank you for correcting it. I appreciate that because I don't want people thinking that. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. I, thank you so much. Um, chapter seven of discerning prophetic witchcraft, selling prophecy and other prophetic scams. Every week, Every week I get at least a half a handful of digital requests from previous people all over the world desperately seeking a prophetic word. Some some begging. Have you been like today? I just went on this um I woke up early and, and I went on this page, right? And you know what's so crazy to me? I went on this page and I just was like, okay, I, I clicked on there. And and I and they was asking me where I can, where I was from. I said the U.S. and blah blah blah, whatever. So when it comes to prophesy to me, they always say the same thing. And I said, you know what? I already been delivered from that. I've been free from that. And no, I don't need to call you and speak to you on the phone because I know I'm already been delivered from that. Okay, I have been delivered from that. So why? Would I call you to talk about something I already been delivered from? But people were begging for a word, begging for a word. Sometimes I just go on there because I want to see what they're going to say. Honestly, I do. I just want to see what they're going to say. Some, mm -mm. um, the guy I, I forgot his name, um, Bridget, the the the, the man that you referred to me to go to, he spoke a word over me and he was dead on. But some of these people, 
I said, Lord, uh, uh-uh. uh, you know, but I, it's just to show you that people, they want a word so bad that they don't care if it's coming from divination or from God. They just want a word. They want a word to, 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 to feel their flesh emotions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. When I need a word, trust me, I'm going to let you know I need a word. But I ain't going on no page to get a word every day for what? I don't need a word every week either. I'm in this word right here. This is my word. That's what I do. I go in there and I search out stuff. And I'm going to search out all these scriptures that we spoke on. I'm going to go and read them scriptures. Trust me. I'm going to read them. And I'm going to see what really happened. It says some begging. Others come demanding. Still others come with money in hand to buy a prophecy or dream interpretation. Seriously, this happened just not every day and more than once on most days. It's unfortunate symptom of modern day prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry that has too often taught people to depend on prophets to go to the throne and get a word when you can go to the God for yourself. For them, instead of fulfilling the Ephesians 4.11. 4.11. I'm, I'm going to have to read that. Because we, you know, I mean, you have the same God. But, you know, it, it, it's sad because a lot of times leaders have made people think that they're the only ones that can hear from God. And then the people are so messed up, especially the young, the young babies. They are messed up because they don't even know. It says, 4 and 11 says, and he gave some apostles. And some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So if you're you're gifted, you don't have to mandate to equip the saints. That's what prophetic is for, is to to basically to equip the body till we come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's why he gave it to us for. To set the captives free. But unto every one of us, it is given grace according to, okay, this is um, four and seven. But unto every one of us is given a grace according to the measures of the gift of Christ. You, we all have a portion of grace and mercy. Wherewith he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, this is number eight and now it's nine. Now that he ascended, what is that? He also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He descended is the same also that has descended far above all heavens and he might till all things. And that's when he says he gives in us gifts. Don't be wrong. It says, don't, it says, don't get me wrong. I'm not all against personal prophecy. Absolutely not. Because it is good. That's why he gave us the, the gifts are there. In fact, at awakening house of prayer, my church in Fort Lauderdale, we have prophecy rooms every Friday night in both English and in Spanish, personal prophecy, edifying, extorting and comforting believers is virtue in this hour and, and and we do need it but prophetic ministry doesn't operate like a gumball machine you can't put a quarter or send an email or facebook message and out comes a prophetic word it just doesn't work that way and it doesn't part of this misunderstanding is rooted in the is rooted is rooted I'm sorry, I missed my place. Hold on. It's rooted in the, it says proliferation. It says proliferation. Pro, it says pro, proliferation of what I call the internet prophets. Jesus, I just said that. The internet prophets. Some actually take out Google ads promoting how you can get a personal prophecy from them every day. Others promise a prophetic word delivered to your email inbox for about a price of a tank of gas. Sounds like a cheap car salesman ad or personal energy attorney billboard. When I see this sort of stuff, it grieves me for two reasons. First, the gift of the Holy Spirit are not for sale. 
You can't buy this. You cannot buy the oil, no matter what you do. You, If you want the oil, you're going to have to go through to get the oil. You're going to have to really go get the oil. The oil is not free. First, the gifts of the spirit are not for sale. We saw Simon and Simon, the sorcerer, try to buy the ability to lay hands on people and get them filled with the Holy Spirit. And we saw Peter sorely rebuke him for it. In fact, Peter said, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in the matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this, of, of this, your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven, forgiving you. For I see that you are a uh, position, a poison. I'm sorry, poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Acts eight and twenty and twenty three. Lord, we can't buy it. And let's not forget Elisha's servant, uh, Jehazi. After Elijah helped Naaman find a cure for leprosy, the commander of Samaria, king's army, offered him a gift for his service. Elisha refused even when Naaman urged him to take it. Gehazi ran after Naaman to collect a reward. Elisha found him, uh, found him out and Gehazi ended up a leper. Don't play with the Holy Spirit. 2 Kings 5, don't play with the Holy Spirit. And don't play with those that are really serving God. Don't play with them. There is consequences, I'm telling you. Be very careful. I'm not saying that prophets cannot receive offerings for ministry. But we must be careful not... Oh, sorry. We must be careful. It says we must be careful not to merchandise the gifts of the spirit. Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Matthew 8, I'm sorry, Matthew 10 and 8. Always remember that. Freely you have given, freely you receive. Everything you got, God gave you. When God blesses financially, he's the one doing it. You're not getting that on your own. Yes, you went to work, but still it's his, he gave it to you because if, if, at any moment he could cut you off. And they fire you and you know they can fire you at any moment, but then they ask you to give a two weeks notice. When you, you notice that, they want a two weeks notice before you quit, but they can fire you in a minute. No. My, my daughter, one of my daughters, I have two daughters that work um, in the hospitals. And I had one of my daughter call me and while she was talking to me when we, we took we went skating we went we, her daughter's birthday we went skating and she was talking to me and she was telling me how unhappy she was on her job and she's a beautician she's gifted she i'm like the girl can do hair okay bomb hair she did mine so i said i just told my daughter i gave her some wisdom i said listen if you get up in the morning and you're not happy walking out the door to go to a job then you it's time for you to go because for me to go to work and I'm miserable, I don't need to be there. Because now, I know we got bills and stuff like that, but now I'm making money, my God, because I'm miserable. I'm going to work every day and I'm miserable. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And if you're feeling like that, to me, God is already, God is, uh, for you to feel like that, I believe God is shifting you to something bigger and better. Because in no ways, in no house, you should be miserable and go to work. If you're miserable and you're unhappy, I don't, I, you know what? Me, I walk away in a minute. I'm miserable and unhappy. I've been, uh, I've been um, unemployed. I mean, unemployed. I've been um, an entrepreneur for years. I had a daycare for eight years. I made over $100,000. I mean, that may not be a lot for some people. That was a whole lot for me. I mean, I've I, 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 I been around money. I had lots of money. But... I decided to do something else. I wanted to get into the law. But at the end of the day, money should not be our motivation. Yeah, he got something better for her. I already told her. I said, listen, there's so many things that you can do from home now. You know, and 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 and, and she she was gonna give them a notice. And then she said, you know what, mama? She said, I'm finna resign. I said, do what you gotta do. I said, because if they're gonna fire you, they're not gonna give you a week. They're going to fire you on the spot. 
But then we feel like, oh, you know, I better give him a two weeks because I, I don't feel right if I don't give him a two weeks. Man, bye. Please. We 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 live in this this unreality type thing life. We just want to do the right thing. And you ain't happy, you don't like where you at. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I ain't staying. I'm not giving you no two weeks notice and be hella, hella stressed out for the next two weeks. And then, then you know I'm leaving too. So you're going to probably really be stressing me out. Nah, I'm out. I'm out. Because in that week that you gave that notice, you got to come to work that whole week. Ain't no telling what they're going to put on you. Okay. Here's my bottom line. I don't believe in demanding law, love offerings or posted suggested donation amounts in exchange for prophecy. I feel that relegates the prophet to domain of your local palm reading who charges five for a 15 minute session. That's why you never see my um, cash app on here. I don't ever ask nobody for nothing. If they bless me, then that was God telling them to bless me. I don't put no, no, even be coming on here every day and teaching. I don't put no cash app because he's my provider. If I'm working for him, I'm working for the best man ever. I'm a billionaire. He is the best employer that I have. The best. The best. And I am sure that the results of such exchange far much better for the ones seeking supernatural guidance. So you're going to go to a, 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 a palm reader. A bell, a bow inspired Je Jezebelic practices and prophetic. Uh, I don't know if some of you know, but some of you, whoever don't know, that the spirit of Baal is what you need to rebuke when you're dealing with Jezebel. Not her. No, no, Jezebel. Jezebel, come out, Jezebel. And I promise you that demon is sitting there like this. Because you're calling out the wrong spirit. The spirit that you need to call out is Baal. B-A-A-L. Look it up. It's the spirit that's behind Jezebel. That's the strong man. Cast that demon out. That's who you need to call cast out. Yes, I've seen people charged for prophetic words many, many times. This spirit of bow inspired practices always grieves me, but the latest campaign made my jaw drop to the floor. I left a, I says, I felt it there to write this article. I will never forget the day I received an email promising me a personal prophetic word every month for, for just $40. No, it's, yeah, but it's, 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 Oh, yeah. Like, it, yeah, it's like, it's this. That's the spirit that you need to cast out when you're calling on Jezebel. That's the demon. Not Jezebel itself. That. And, and you're right. It sounds like Baal. So Baal is like, what, what do you have to do when you're captive? When you're in jail, what do they ask you for? Bail money, right? It's like you're captive. You're captive. It says $40 a month. Wow. That's not even the price of a cup of a coffee a day. Seriously, though, imagine how many children we could feed in a third world country for that for that investment. I was assured receiving a prophetic word from God would help me help me from making so many mistakes and creating setbacks. I wasn't aware I was making that many mistakes or that I couldn't hear from God myself. This is the power of suggestion at bet and taking advantage of desperate hurting people at worst. Because it's true when people are hurting and they're desperate and they feel like they can't hear God, then they're going to try to go to every source to get an answer. And most of the time, what do they do? They go to soothsayers. This is also a fear tactic and one of the four pillars of modern day secular advertising. The others are guilt, greed, and exclusively TVT. This prophetic ma um, merchandising felt led to send out this email so people who aren't ready, already paying him 40 a month, will understand why they should. He highly recommended this uh, uh, subscription so I could hear what the Lord is saying and even receive an endorsement of another well-known prophetic minister, God, the blood of Jesus, which may have been taken out of context. By the way, I saw no offer of money 
back guarantee if the word was rotten. At the same time, Frame, a young man who is branding himself as a prophet, shared with me how he had prophesied over a number of people about starting a business and those businesses were widely successful. That should have been a reward enough. But the young man was complaining that none of them returned with the offering in hand for his ministry. He took credit for their success and wanted a payback. Well, freely you receive, freely you give. You, you, you When you give a word to somebody, you don't have to expect money. It's just a word that God, God gave it to you, the Holy Spirit. It ain't you anyway. He told me he felt led to start a consulting business to prophesy to into people's businesses for a price. Oh Lord have mercy. This young man went and went on to enter many uh, aberrant practices and like Gehazi, his spiritual leprosy. The problem is most people don't discern it, and those in this spiritual lineage are coming under the unclean spirit that is covering him. So if you're under a covering, this is important too. If you're under a covering, you better make sure that covering is right. You better make sure that Jesus is under that covering. Because a lot of people are just joining churches without even seeking God about where they're going, who they're under, what spirit is operating, all of that. And what gets me, what really gets me on that is that they go, they keep going to church and going to church and going to church, and then they don't get delivered at all. They still bound, and then they call you. People call me sometimes, and they want to convince me that that's not the problem, that they're okay, and this and this and that. But then, why are you still bound? How long you been there? Why are you still bound? Why? I mean, at at that at some point, you should have been delivered. But, hey, I don't know. I mind my business. I just want God to use me where I can see blind eyes, see arms grow, legs grow, that the spirit of God will overtake me and overpower me and use me for real, for real. I don't care about no, no fake, nothing. I ain't trying to do none of that. I want the truth and the living God. That's all I want. That's that's my entire desire. And this last in evil days is the desire to serve him for real, to serve him doing signs, wonders, and miracles because the body is in trouble. And if somebody don't step up, we're going to be lost. Many are going to be lost. Somebody don't take a stand and stand up. And it's true. These examples are uh, Jezebel. Jezebel calls herself a prophetess, but is anything but. In fact, the spirit of Jezebel is a false prophetic spirit that works in divination and smooth sayings to seduce God's people to commit immortality and worship idols. Revelation 2 and 20. Far beyond control and manipulation, the spirit of Jezebel works over time to muzzle or kill prophetic voices. So if you're a prophet and you're being attacked, just know that the enemy is using folks, people to come and try to, um, you know, shut you up. Far beyond control and manipulation. The spirit of Jezebel works over time to muzzle, kill prophetic voices. If Jezebel's witchcraft against your mind don't intimidate you, this principality works to pervert the prophetic voice through compromise. Of course, the Jezebel spirit also works through false prophets, those who, who set out to deceive, to wire money out of your pocket with, uh, oh my God, with, uh, sen sensational prophecies that tap into the idolatry in your heart or fearful prophecies that manipulate the soul. Knowing these realities shouldn't make you shun prophets or prophetic ministry. God's prophet movement is like rain on a thirsty church. When the rain falls, the result is the growth of beautiful grass and flowers, as well as weeds, thorns, uh, thorns and, and um, thistles. In any garden, there are far more flowers than weeds. Sometimes you have to eat the hay and spit out the sticks. <laughs> okay. But you need to know the sticks will choke you or you might try to chew them. Why do, it says, why do you pay for prophecy? Why do you, why do so many people 
give so freely to so many Jezebelic prophets? Why are you, oh, it says, why are some Christians supporting Jezebel's false prophetics instead of sowing into true kingdom of God? Because they like to feel the good, good. They like to feel good. They, they, I don't know, you know, somebody, if somebody tells you things that you want to hear, then that's why they do it. But I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what does say God. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to just give you the word of God. The kingdom of God. See lie. It says there, there are a few reasons. One is that they are desperate. Jezebel Never utter a Holy Spirit inspired prophetic word in your life, but rather she pray she prays P R E Y S on the hurt, wounds, wants, and needs of the soul with divination. But some believers are desperate for supernatural direction, so desperate that they will listen to any voice that says it is God. I'm trying to tell you. I had people prophesy to me, and I'm like, mm. I said, okay. But I didn't even know what that was. And you know what? And it's crazy because my grandson was there. He was like, what? Now, he's 16, and I'm noticing the prophetic is starting to really work, operate on him. The God is really doing something prophetically in him. He doesn't know it, though. He don't know it, but I see it, and I know He's a prophet. And I see what God is doing. The prophetic is moving in his, his, his life. So this is why the enemy was fighting him so much and fighting him against me so much. Because that gift was getting ready to come out. So he's been saying stuff and things has been happening. He's, he's speaking and it's happening. And I'm just like, I, I, I haven't said anything to him because God didn't tell me to say anything. I'm just praying. God, cult, you know, cultivated, just, just make it good. Just, just, just do what you do because I see it. It's on him. It's on him. It's on him. And now I know why the enemy fights him. So now I know how to um, fight for him. Because sometimes we want to fight for people, but we, we don't know what we're fighting for. Because we don't go to God and ask God, what really, what is it really? Because there's times in my, my life that I, stuff be happening, I'll be like, I don't know. Like, I've been dealing with something with my dog. I'm going to take her to the vet, but there's something going on with her. And I, honest to God, y'all, I could be wrong. This is me. God, God ain't say nothing. I honestly believe it's a spirit. But... I haven't got the full confirmation or the, 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 is it really a spirit Lord? So I'm going to take her to the vet and see what they say, but I don't know. And I ain't going to stay here. Oh, it's a spirit. It's a demon. It's a demon. I done prayed and called it. I called it out and called it out and called it out. And then she gets better. And then she, then she doing it again. So I'm like, okay, what is this really? You know, am I, did I miss it? Cause I, if I miss it, I want, I want God to show me, show me father, show me what it is. So I'm going to take her to the vet. So that way I can find out what it is. I just made an appointment for her. And they just confirmed it. But I didn't answer. They was calling. But I, I mute my phone because I, I, when I'm doing this, I don't want people interrupting. So I made an appointment. So I can find what, what it is. It's, it's, is there, is she, because she's old. You know, she's really old. She's like nine years old in, in human life. So she's very old. She's getting old. And if there's something going on, I want to know what it is. But let's, you know, everything is not a demon. Everything is not. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I'm learning something. And what are you, are you trying to teach me something? And everything, there's a lesson. Are you trying to teach me? Okay. Let's see what this is. So I'm, 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 like I said, I'm learning just like you guys are. It says, before I got saved, I used to go, I used to go, to a tarot card reading, palm readers, crystal readers, and even call divination hotlines looking for direction for my life. I was going through major trials and I didn't know which way was up and I didn't know the Lord. I was de desperate. Many believers are just as desperate. Although Jesus clearly said that my sheep hear my voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. John 10, 27. Um, it's weird. It says John 10, 27. 
but then it says 5. 10, 27, and then 5, I guess, 5, 2. It says, I've discovered that many believers can clearly hear the voice of the devil telling them to sin, condemning them after they do it, and uh, another, and, and other otherwise selling them a pack of lies. Many have not been taught that they can hear the voice of God or train how to discern and identify the many ways he speaks. Another reason is they don't understand that prophecy can come from one of three sources, the human spirit, a demonic spirit, or the Holy Spirit. So they don't even attempt to exercise any discernment whatsoever. Our human spirits have plenty of edification, exhortation, and comfort to offer, but that doesn't make our utterances God-breathing prophetic words. On the flip side, demonic spirits are prophesying to many in the body of Christ through divers. I've been saying this for months. Nobody want to believe me because you feel like you in a church and it's great and it's loving and everything you, everything you want is being given to you, but you have not sat down and asked the Lord what's really going on. And then people prophesying to you who's actually hearing the devil speak to them. The, the diver demon is talking to them and they're giving you a prophecy and you accepting it. Mm -mm, not today. I'm not talking about the fortune tellers with the tarot cards or crystal balls and those creepy little shops of horrors. I'm talking about those who prophesying in the name of the Lord Jesus. See Matthew 7 and 22. Matthew 7 and 22. Brittany! Oh my God. My phone is ringing and I know who's calling me. My son. I don't know if she's in the bathroom. Oh. 722. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh my gosh. You guys want, give me a second. I have a call from. I just have to tell him it's not. I'm going to have to tell him to call her back. Sorry, you guys. Can you call, can you call Brittany back? Because I'm still doing my live and you were calling her phone. Excuse I can't. I, I'm almost done, but you have to talk. DJ was calling you. Here's your phone. Call her. DJ. Sorry, he's going to call her back. He was like, I'm tired of you. <laughs> My son is funny, you guys. He said, I'm tired of you. Why are you, you? I never could talk to you. You got me. Yeah, I'm, I'm busy. I'm working for Jesus. He's talking about how much Jesus paying me. A lot. <laughs> My son is funny, you guys. He said, how much is, how much is Jesus paying you? <laughs> if he didn't pay me nothing, I'm going to still do it. Please believe that. <laughs> so forgive me you guys okay so it says uh, I've discovered that many believers can clearly hear the voice we can hear the voice of God it says but we have not been trained I said but we believe a pack of lies many have not taught that they can hear the voice of God or train how to discern and identify in many ways he speaks another reason is that they don't understand that prophecy can come from one of three sources which is the human spirit the demonic spirit the holy spirit so they don't even attempt to exercise discernment whosoever our human spirits have plenty of edification exhortation and comfort offering but that doesn't make our utterances god breathed prophetic words on the flip side demonic spirits are prophesying to many in the body of christ through divers and i'm not talking about the fortune tellers with the tarot cards and crystal balls and those creepy 
little shop of horrors. I am talking about those who prophesy in the name of the Lord. And I've been saying this for months. The spirit has been saying this for months. Be, beyond those three sources, people can tap into while prophesy, pro, while prophesying. We know that many in, uh, inter, interpret prophets study the lives of those that are going to, to prophecy to before releasing the word. Let me read that again because I just missed all of that. That was tongue tied for me. Beyond those three sources, people can tap into while prophesying. We know that many internet prophets study the lives of those they are going to prophesy to before releasing the word. God bless you, William Teller. Did y'all hear that? They study them or seek information from other means. Some of them peer over the soldiers of victims to catch a glance at the name and addresses on their offering envelope so they can later prove their prophetic pro process. We, it says, we know many read body language or otherwise try to read their minds. With the, ra the rise of internet prophets, there is a lot of emphasis on selling prophetic words, but believers are still falling for some of the old gimmicks from the 1980s, like miracle water, power prayer soap. You can still watch late Night Christian TV shows where they they selling this garbage. An investigation of an old school tele uh, televangelist revealed the miracle water he was paddling after prime time came from Costco. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> came from Costco, a mega supermarket. The latest trend is selling. Uh, it says. It's e, e, e D water E I, I, I can't even, I, it's E N G E D I India water which false prophets claim comes from the springs of uh, something uh, India in Israel and has supernatural powers but it came from Costco. You do you know that you can pray over your own water? You can pray over your own water. God can anoint the water. Pray over your own water. <laughs> it says. On a recent trip to Israel, I saw this sold for a few shackles, less than a one U.S. dollar to thirsty tourists. An American, they are selling it for $5 a bottle and claiming that it will bring immediately break. New flanked false prophets have put a new twist on the water miracle gimmick. Some have been pictured spraying miracle water into the eyes of believers who are desperate to see in the spirit. It says 1 Timothy 5.17, the elder or pastor who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work, had to be preaching, teaching in scripture. And it says, don't muzzle, muzzle the ox. If you are a true pastor or worker, then the worker deserves their pay. Yeah. If you, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, if somebody wants to give, it's fine. They, they can give, but, I don't think we should be begging people for, for, for money because if God, like God called me to do this. So I depend on him. I, I depend on him. If he want, if he uses somebody, like if I ask him for something and somebody says, Hey, I'm going to bless you with this. I know that he did it because I, I just spoke to him. Me and him just had a conversation. And a lot of times I don't speak out of my mouth. I speak in my heart. So he hears me and then he does it. So I know it's God. A lot of times you don't have to speak out of your mouth because a lot of times the enemy knows what you're saying out of your mouth. So don't speak out of your mouth. Speak to God with your heart. He knows. He can hear you. I speak with my heart to him. It says desperate, willing to shortcut. And then they got this, this water. He said that they sell it. Are desperate to see the spirit. But, oh my God, if these people. Come on, go, go, go. It said the spirit are willing to short cut the Holy Ghost in order to show off their spiritual senses. Yes, water is found in conjunction with certain miracles in the Bible. But it says Elijah. I said Elisha. It says Elisha instructed Nam to dip in the Jordan uh, River seven times to find cleansing from his leprosy in 2 Kings. But Elisha refused the commander's financial reward. And when Gehazi Chase down, name it, to collect. 
Elisha pronounced a generational curse over his prodigy. Again, in John 4 and 5. I mean, five and four, which some translates of the Bible omit. We see that in a certain season, an angel came down to the port of Bethesda to trouble the water. Whoever got into the water first was healed of whatever disease he had. Yeah, water cleanses. Um, but there was not a, anyone standing by with a credit card machine <laughs> waiting to collect an offering for the experience. And John 97, Jesus told a blind man to go wash in the pool, uh, it says Silomon, and he was healed. But Jesus didn't charge him for a map to find the location of the pool. So we are not supposed to be charging. False prophets love to use water in their lying signs and wonders. Thessalonians 2 and 9. But it's nothing more than witchcraft. Thessalonians Second Thessalonians. Two and I. It says, but it's nothing more than witchcraft. Some something called Florida, Florida, Florida water is used regularly in Santa Maria. It's used to seek spiritual guidance from ancestors, cleaning altars as an addiction to the link, to the ink and a pen with which they Right out spells for protection and more. Well, God bless you. Um, God bless you, man of God, Bishop uh, BJ. God bless you. I believe that if God tells you to use it, then he's doing that for his purpose. I believe if he tells you, go ahead and do it, then I believe he's you obey him. Then that's him speaking to you. I believe there's, there, there are certain situations where he will tell you to do that, but that's something you're going to have to believe God for. It says, I believe, it says, okay, uh, it says cleansing altars in addition to Lincoln Pen, which uh, is uh, spells for protection and more. There, it says there is a whole category on the dark side called water witches, which work witchcraft with water. I believe water spirits, water spirits, that's what they are. There are water spirits. We already talked about that. Marie Spears, water spirit, which I wrote about in my book, The Spiritual Warrior's Guide to defeat the water spirits are releasing this witchcraft as they are being exalted in these practices. In 2012, miracle soap claims led to over 25,000 and flies and files of for believe TV. The broadcaster was running testimony programs based on breakthrough after using miracle oil, uh, olive oil soap to cure cancer. Nevertheless, Christians are still falling for the miracle soap gimmick. We don't need miracle soap and miracle water. Jesus washes us with the water of the word. And that is so true. Ephesians 5 and 26. Ephesians 5 and 26. I am by no means saying God can't use water. That's what I said. Because if he tells you, he can. I, I've, I've had times where he... Um, there's, you can actually pray over the water and anoint your water yourself. You have the Holy Spirit. You don't need nobody to do that. You can do that yourself. And modern day miracles. But again, desperation de uh, derives people to pay big money for a big nothing. What's next? Jesus spit a mud to heal another man's blind eye. Are you going to see containers of spit mud on sale in the false prophets conference? When I was very young in the Lord, I was in a meeting right on the front row with a prophet whose name you would know if I called it. The anointing was strong. The preaching was good. I was on my feet cheering and prophet, uh, um, the prophet on. Suddenly everything shifted and she started uh, pumping prayer shawls that guaranteed quick prayer answers. She said the, she said the only, she said she only had a few and that, Whoever was willing to sow $1,000, I already know who it is. He ain't even got to tell me. I know exactly who it is. Would be blessed with one of three life-changing prayer shawls. People rushed up with checks and had to get this scarf, pre, uh, uh, precious cloth. Little did they know she had a large box full in the back. I ran out of the hotel conference room through the kitchen and out into the streets of Philadelphia. That's what... You should do when you see a false prophet, grab your purse and run. I asked the Lord what happened. And when 
she was preaching, the anointing was tangible. The Lord told me when she was preaching my word, you felt an anointing on the word. When she started merchandising and left. Don't put prophets on a pedestal. Don't put prophets ever put a prophet on a pedestal. Like I say, when I prophesy to somebody and they get it, I just what I tell them to do is thank God because it wasn't me. I don't know your business. I don't talk to people. I don't be on the phone. And I do that for a reason. I pretty much I'm either with my family or I'm by myself. I don't do that. And I do that because nobody's going to come back and say, oh, somebody told you. Nobody ain't told me nothing. Nobody ain't told me nothing. When people come to me seeking, demand, demanding or, or offering money for prophetic words, it also bothers me because, uh, again, this is often learned behavior. These precious believers generally want to hear from God and they don't know it's appropriate imp to approach a prophet like a psychic. Again, many saints have been conditioned to run to the prophet every time they need to hear from God. That's not healthy. It puts the prophet up on a pedestal. And that's what a lot of Christians are doing right now. And I'm going to speak on it. That's what a lot of people are doing right now. You run into, you call somebody because you want them to prophesy to you. You want a word. So you, you call the people because you want to, you really want a word. You're not really calling them to talk. You really want to call them because you want a word. And that's not everyone, but there are some people like that. And I promise you, you keep doing that, the enemy going to give you a word. It says, evil people use water and other things. Jesus' miracle were real. So the devil um, tries to copycat. Yeah, he copies everything. Water is not evil. We drink it. it, it, it yeah, it's not evil. It's, it's how they do it. But what he's saying is that there are water witches that use water to do certain things. So what he's saying is we shouldn't be all caught up in that. You know, caught up in that. You put some water on your forehead and you're going to be delivered. Like you know, like he said, they sell in water. Again, and many saints have been conditioned to run to prophets, you know, and it's unhealthy. You're putting the, the, the prophet on a pedestal. Every believer can and should be able to hear God for themselves. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 10 and 27. Believers may need training in order to separate the voice of their mind from the voice of the devil, from the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that is a fact. As I've said repeatedly in the pages of this book, one of the functions of fivefold prophets is to help impart discernment through uh, practical teaching, training, as well as prayer. But too many prophets, especially internet prophets, have set themselves up as the answer man for a price and doing so they are robbing believers of more than money. They are robbing believers of a chance to pursue a, a more intimate relationship with God. Like I said to you this morning, I got on this live and I was listening to this man and, 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 he, and, and I'm like, Oh God, I, you know, I just do it. Cause I want to see what they're going to say. I promise you. So I'm like, okay, so here we go. The prophecy. Okay. I'm listening to this prophecy. I'm like, okay. The next thing I know is I need you to call me so I can pray for you. I don't need you to pray for me because I'm already prayed for myself. I'm already delivered and I'm already set free. The word that you gave me does not apply to me because I am free. I'm free from that. I'm free from that. And I notice that every time I go to one of them prophecies, they always say the same thing. But because you know why? Because that spirit of divination not God, that spirit of divination knows that that thing that they're saying is uh, it, it's very sensitive to me in my heart. So they use that and it's always the same thing. So no devil, I don't receive. I don't. I don't receive. I do not receive that. Again, don't get me wrong. I believe in pro personal prophecy. There are true prophets here. There are. And I believe sometimes you need to a word from the prophet or prophetic ministers as confirmation. Yes, you do. But there are many voices out there. And when you are under tremendous stress, and that's when he gets you. Remember, I told you guys on Monday, the enemy was talking. I mean, I was, I was, I, I wasn't, 
I mean, the Lord, that day, the Lord, I never heard the Lord speak to me as much as he did on Monday. Because <laughs> he speaks to me, but not like that. He, I mean, we was like, we was like, my that, that was like my my, my bestie. We, he was really talking to me and he was more, mostly encouraging me and telling me, don't say that. Because the enemy was also talking and then he would tell me, don't, don't open your mouth and say nothing other than positivity. So he was talking to me. So you got to know what voice you're hearing. Because a lot of us ain't hearing God, but we say we are. And I believe sometimes you need a word from prophet and prophetic minister for confirmation. There are many voices out here. And when you are under tremendous stress, when you are at a fork in the road and don't know which way to turn, when you have pursued God with all your heart and remain confused, pers uh, pro a personal prophecy can build you up, offer you direction and warning and comfort to you. Okay, well, I'm going to stop here. And then we're going to finish tomorrow. This one is prophetic ministry still misunderstood. So I'm going to stop here. And we're going to finish tomorrow. Because we really need to understand this prophetic thing. We really do. And I don't care. I'm not going, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing on this page. I'm going to tell the truth. If it walks like a duck, I'm going to, it walks like a duck. I'm not gonna. I don't care. We we could be friends and all that, but I, if God tells me to say something, see that's the problem with a lot of us. We make friends with people, and then when God give you a word for them, you're afraid to tell them because now you're gonna lose the friendship. And this is why you need to separate yourself and be 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 there for God, and 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 and, and don't be following folks. And then when you got a word for them, you know you don't want to give it to them. You don't want to give it to them. Because now you, you think you're going to lose a friend. Oh, well, you know what? If you lose a friend for telling the truth, then they were never your friends anyway. If you lose a friend for telling them the truth, they were never your friend. Okay? So just be honest with yourself and be honest with others. If God gives you a word for somebody, don't sit there and try to switch it up and sugarcoat it. Don't do that. Just tell them what God said. If they want to be your friend because you told the truth, amen. And if they don't want to be your friend because you told the truth, then amen to that too. They will never be your friend anyway. That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. But tell the truth to it hurts. Because at the end of the day, children of the living God, you got to answer to him. You do. You have to answer to him. At the end of the day, it's not people that you're going to have to answer to. It's God. It's him that you're going to have to go to. It's him. So don't put yourself out like that. So, Father, we just thank you for this um, prayer. Father, we thank you for this, the, this teaching today, Father. I pray, Father, that those that came on, they got something, Father, out of it. I pray, Father God, that they would just go out and do what your words say do God I pray that you would they be like sponges and that, that you would just begin to minister to them through the word that was given today oh God I pray that Father God that you would bring these words back to their remembrance today Father I thank you so much for all those that came on here. I thank you for them, Father God. Thank you for blessing them and lifting them up, God, above every situation, oh God. Father God, I thank you even for uh um the correction word that came forth. I pray that no one's offended. I pray that they just understand how they need to operate, God. And I pray that they know that I still love them. I pray I, I pray that they know, Father God, that I have nothing against anyone. I am just trying to do the will of God. I'm trying to obey God. Father, I pray that you would go to the hospitals this morning and that you touch those that are in the hospitals, touch those that are in juvenile hall, God, all over the world. Touch those that are in convalescent homes. Father, foster care children, oh God. Bless them, oh God. Father, God, trafficking, God, I pray that you begin to expose all traffickers, God. Bring this thing to an end, oh God, in the name of Jesus. There are children that are being trafficked, God. Children that are being stolen, I pray that they be found in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray that you go to every... Uh, courthouse, Father God, and that I come against that marine spirit because that marine spirit is what's working in the courthouses. If you didn't know, 
That's the spirit that's operating in the courthouse. Father, I pray that those water spirits be bound. I pray in the name of Jesus that the fire of God would cast out every evil decision in the courthouse. In the mighty name of Jesus, go into every prison. Show mercy. Show your love in the name of Jesus to those that are in prison, oh God. Show love and mercy, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the guards would treat them with kindness and love, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray, Father, that they would see Father God, that it could be them in the same predicament. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you right now, Father, that you will bless us today, that you will show us your favor, your mercy, and your grace. Keep us and protect us as we go on this day, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we meet again tomorrow, Father, I thank you, Father God, that then we will come with an open mind and understanding. And I pray, Father, that we seek you daily in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.